Hi, I'm Zhao Dong, a researcher at the Harvard School of Public Health. Today, I will be walking you through the steps of mercury analysis we conducted here at the Trace Meadows Laboratory for the Grand Lake Watershed Mercury Study. After receiving fish samples on dry ice from Grand Lake, we freeze dried them first to remove the water content. At this point, the samples are very brittle, and we grind them into a fine powder to make each sample homogeneous. We use a direct mercury analyzer, or DMA, that analyzes the total amount of mercury in tissues directly. We weigh out each sample into a sampling boat and enter the weight into the DMA, and the machine will use it to calculate the concentration of mercury in the sample. When the analysis starts, the machine raises the sample and places it into the testing chambers. With a large batch of samples, we weigh out a sequence of samples and program the location of each one on the tray, and the machine can automatically pick up the samples one by one. Here the tray rotates to locate the next sample and starts another analysis. It takes about 8 minutes for each sample to be run. During each run, the sample is burned completely, and the mercury is trapped on a gold amalgamator, and then heated into a vapor to be detected on an atomic absorption spectrometer. We can monitor the process of the analysis by checking the status of different compartments of the DMA and how much time remains for each sample. After each run, the output of the analysis is presented and saved on a screen. The concentration of mercury in this sample, for example, is 287 micrograms per kilogram, or parts per billion. Our hair is a good and widely used biomarker of the mercury absorbed into our bloodstreams. Hair grows at a rate of about 1 cm per month, and there is another 1 cm within the scalp, so the first 2 cm from scalp tells about our exposure in the past 1 to 3 months, and that's what we're using for this study. We then weigh each sample the same way as we measure the fish tissue. Here, I carefully put them in a sampling boat and trim the few stray hairs that might be sticking out. We place the samples on the tray just as we did for the fish tissues, and the machine will analyze them for us. Now that we have the mercury level in our hair sample, we want to compare it to some kind of benchmark value to determine if we are at risk. EPA has developed a hair mercury guideline for women of childbearing age and children, and it is 1 parts per million, or 1,000 micrograms per kilogram. So for example, for a hair sample with 0.3 parts per million mercury, which is represented by the thick black line here, it is below the EPA guideline and is considered at low risk. Here are the average amount of mercury in one 8-ounce serving in common fish species that we tested from Grand Lake Watershed. According to EPA's fish mercury guideline, your weight in pounds is roughly how many micrograms of mercury you can have each month from eating local fish. For example, if you weigh 150 pounds, you can have up to 150 micrograms of mercury each month and stay below EPA's guideline for women of childbearing age and children, which means you can eat up to 25 servings of crappie only or four servings of largemouth bass, plus six servings of blue catfish. <laughs>